the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Notice, I'm sure, how you develop a definitely friendly feeling for certain things you use or wear. Maybe it's a tweed coat that just seems right for you and you hate to give it up. Maybe it's a household appliance that makes your work easier. It might very well be Johnson's glow coat. Many women have written us letters of high praise for glow coat. They like it for three very good reasons. First, it saves them many hours of work all year long. There's no rubbing or buffing with Johnson's glow coat because it's self-polishing. You simply apply it to your linoleum or other floors and let it dry. Second, Glow Coat gives your linoleum a beautiful polish that's easy to maintain. And it keeps colors new looking practically forever. And third, regular care with Glow Coat adds greatly to the life of your linoleum, new or old. Because it protects the surface against wear, dirt, and moisture. For these three good reasons, Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat has made real friends everywhere. has come to Wistful Vista. The birds are building new nests with a sneer at the OPA. Happy neighbors are planting new crops of tomatoes and lumbago in their victory gardens. And at number 79, we find the little woman, as usual, busy with her housework. And the little man, as usual, flat on his Davenport. <laughs> as we meet, Fibber McGee and Molly. I don't know what's the matter with me today, Molly. I, I feel awful restless. I know you do, dearie. You've turned over twice in the last hour. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I mean, well, maybe it's just spring or something, but I feel a burning ambition, a, a, a yen to do something. Well, the front lawn could use a little grass seed. Ah, grass seed. The birds eat it before it hits the ground. The smartest thing we could do would be to pave that front yard with green cement. <laughs> no planting, no watering, no mowing, no dandelions. Say, that ain't a bad idea. Come in. Uh, 79 Whistle Vista? Yeah. Fib McGee? Yeah. Telegram? Give me. Sign. Where? Here. <laughs> there. Here. Thanks. Right. Scram. McGee? Huh? Chip? Nope. Dope. <laughs> I do think you might have slipped the lad a quarter, dearie. Well, I, didn't under, I didn't want to undermine the kid's character. <laughs> Besides, I'm laying on my change purse. Who's the telegram from? Western Union. We know anybody at Western Union? <laughs> well, not since Uncle Dennis got too fat for his uniform. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe this is from Roosevelt. I wired him asking if he needed a man at the San Francisco conference that understood Russian. Heavenly days. Do you understand Russian? Oh, a little. Pachacornia. <laughs> that means dark eyes. Nichevo, that means it doesn't matter. Yeah? Spasiba, thank you. Caviar, that means fish eggs. I see. So by the time you say thank you for the fish eggs, they've got dark eyes, but it doesn't matter. You're through. <laughs> oh, my gosh, even a smattering of Russian. Hey, Molly, look, I won. I won a prize. Look at the telegram. Read it to me. What'd you win a prize for? Remember that limerick contest I sent in the last line, too, into the contest, too? I won. Well, good for you, dearie. What'd you win? A limerick contest I sent in the last no, line. No, I mean, what's the prize? Huh? Oh. Well, let me read this again. It says, happy to inform you judges considered your poetic efforts best. Prize on way. You hear that? My poetic efforts. My poetic efforts. Well, it was just one line of a limerick, wasn't it? My dear girl, that is not the point. The point is that I have achieved recognition as a poet. Oh, dear. 
And now I know what's been bothering me all day. Why I've been so restless. It's the poet in me striving for expression. It's the creative urge. A yearning to write. Ah, at last I have found myself. And right where you left you, too. <laughs> ah, poetry. My destiny. Let me live in a roadhouse by the side of a man and be friendly. <laughs> or let me... Hello, Mrs. McGee, Mr. McGee. Hello, Alice. Good day, my child. Ah, uh, don't you remember sweet Alice Ben Blue? Uh, ben Bolt, Mr. McGee. Oh, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't you remember sweet Alice Ben Bolt? Sweet Alice... You like poetry, child? Hmm? I am by way of being a bard, you know. <laughs> oh, gee, really? Have you been writing poetry very long, Mr. McGee? His uh, efforts to date consist of one line of a limerick, Alice. It's like me sewing a button on a house dress and calling myself Hattie Carnegie. <laughs> what do you mean, one line of a limerick? I wrote more than that. Remember that poem I wrote when we were so broke and I had to pawn that big brass padlock? What was the title of that poem, Mr. McGee? Hawk, Hawk the Lock. <laughs> I remember. You also wrote one when you were in the Army. Huh? You know, when the captain uh, broke up the crap game in the mess tent? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paradise Lost. <laughs> Almost forgot that. But it just goes to show you, Alice, I have a definite flair for poetry. Mm. Oh, I wish I had a room where I could shut myself away from the world, mm. where I could commute with nature and think beautiful thoughts. Well, you could call yourself Edgar and use the guest room. Oh, oh. <laughs> please, please, let us not descend to levity. <laughs> ah, to think that after all these years of futile struggle, to think that the moose has at last returned. The what? Moose. M-U-S-E, moose. <laughs> Literary expression, my child, means inspiration. In fact, they got one right now. Who's got a pencil? Write this down. Please. Oh, dear, I haven't got a pencil. Oh, here, I'll use my lipstick. I'll uh, write it in shorthand. Go ahead, Mr. McGee. Uh, the glittering dewdrops on the lawn were there this morning. Now they're gone. And can be seen no more, alas, those pixie footprints in the grass. Ah. Oh. Well, now, isn't that sweet? <clears throat> read that back to me, Alice. I want to see if it needs any fixing. Uh, read it back? Uh, yes, that verse about the brownie's hoof prints. <laughs> you wrote it down in shorthand. You said you could write shorthand. Oh, I can write it, but I never did learn to read the stuff. Oh, sure. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and La Golandrina. Remember I told you this morning to remind me to get a haircut? Yes. Oh, forget it. I'm going to let it get long. What? Who ever saw a poet with a crew haircut? <laughs> Gee, I, I might even grow a beard. Longfellow had a beard. So did Whitman. I'm talking about poets. <laughs> Candy makers don't wear beards. <laughs> Ain't sanitary. No, I meant Walt Whitman. 
Oh, here. Anyway, you won't have to wait long, dearie. Hmm? Your hair is long enough now to write short poetry. <laughs> ah, it's so self-satisfying to know that one is doing what nature has equipped one to do. <laughs> to feel the thrill of creation when one dashes off a sonnet or a roundelay. I don't mind your roundelays. It's your laying around that gets me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's the matter with me. I have been suppressed. Did you ever have the feeling of being stifled, hemmed in, cooped up? Unable to expand yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Uh, but it goes away when I take my girdle off. <laughs> you know, I think I shall contact one of the newspaper syndicates. It's time that my poetry was brought to the masses. Oh, dear. I should like to lift their drab lives out of the muck and mire and bring them into the bright sunlight of... Yeah, and there might be some dough in it, too. <laughs> you might try your hand at writing greeting cards. Ah, too commercial. I shall strive for higher things. Try skywriting. <laughs> For instance, just now I had a passing thought A gay bit of whimsy Under the spreading maple tree The village blacksmith stands I've heard that one, McGee You've heard it? How could you heard it? I haven't even written it yet Well, it sounds mighty familiar Well, I don't see... Oh, maybe you're thinking of Under the spreading chestnut tree I am This is under the spreading maple tree <laughs> oh, Different kind of a tree entirely Mine goes, under the spreading maple tree, the village blacksmith lies. Nobody has a horse to shoe, so all he shoes is flies. <laughs> you like that? Well, it has a certain something. Betcha. But if we leave the windows open a little while, it'll clear out. One thing I shall strive for in my work is a delicate sort of a... Come in. Well, heavenly days, it's Mrs. Carstairs. Do come in, Mrs. Carstairs. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Good day, Mr. McGee. Good day, Mrs. Carstairs. I trust you are well. But how else could one be on such a glorious spring day? With the tender leafy buds bursting into life and the heavens resounding to the lyrical sweetness of songbeards. <laughs> the lyrical sweetness of what, McGee? Songbeards. Poets don't say birds. They say beards. Do you remember the bit of verse that goes, a little beardy in a tree sang as he twinkled his eye at me? <laughs> as a poet, you are no Omar Khayyam. In fact, you're laying more eggs than I am. <laughs> Do I understand, Mrs. McGee, that your husband is a poet? Oh, yes, indeed, Mrs. Carstairs. Oh, how splendid. We Carstairs, you know, are direct lineal descendants of Alfred Lord Tennyson. Ah, yes. Excellent chap, Alfred. <laughs> Some of his work was mildly successful, I believe. I, on the other hand, trace my family back to Edgar Allan Poe. Sort of a Poe relation, you might say. <laughs> you uh, care for poetry, Mrs. Carstairs? I simply adore it, Mr. McGee. I think my favorite bit of verse is that which I am sure you know. My heart is a lonely hunter, hunting a lonely hill. Hunting and hunting and hunting for a place to build a still. <laughs> Known that one for years, Carsty. Really, Mr. McGee, you're quite talented. Uh, would you consent someday to address our local chapter of the Granddaughters of the Puritans? It would be such a surprise to the ladies. Indeed it would. <laughs> Frankly, Mrs. Carstairs, I feel that the world is not yet ready for my work. My poetry consists of such delicate fantasy that it can only be comprehended by scholars. You understand, I hope. Oh, quite, quite. But uh, what I came in for, Mrs. McGee, was to renew my suggestion that you join our chapter. We do have such fun. Well, uh, I'll think it over, Mrs. Carstairs. Thank you. Uh, just uh, what do the granddaughters of the Puritans do at their meetings? Oh, we serve tea and make resolutions and pass motions and uh, do what we can for real Americanism, such as prohibiting the flag from being displayed in front of shops which cater to the lower classes. <laughs> now, here is an application blank for you Do think it over uh, Thank you uh, Good day, Mrs. Carstairs And remember, remember what Fragilard said in his last letter to Janetone Each in his own way must strive to denigrate the infinite of Crevamorn That wave by wave the very damper of Sanatroy must in the end have sway <laughs> uh, uh, How lovely, I hope I can remember it uh, Good day <laughs> Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Is she a fool? How can you say that, McGee? She was quite impressed by your poetry. Well, don't that prove it? <laughs> yeah, 
had the sense of a jaybird, she'd know I was a phony. You gonna join them granddaughters? Well, I don't know. Might do me good to get out of an uh, apron and into a fox fur for a few afternoons. My goodness. Hi, folks. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Ah, oh, my boy, come in, come in. Warm thee at our hearth and have no care. Just park thy well-fed carcass in a chair. But... <laughs> How's that again? Just a little poetry, Mr. Wilcox. Himself here has decided to make a career of it. I'm dedicating my life to poetry, Junior. I feel that life is so sordid, so ugly, that I must do what I may to bring it beauty. Show him your notebook, dearie. I have a feeling it'll be a collector's item someday, Mr. Wilcox. Mm. And I hope I don't forget to put the can out the day he collects. <laughs> well, let's see it, pal. Oh, these are just random jottings, lad. Just vagrant thoughts. I feel that when I have suffered more keenly... Say, I... this is good. The evening sun goes down upon the plain. Homeward the plowman plods his weary way. Who plods his weary way? Homeward the plowman. <laughs> I thought Homeward was rather a quaint name for a plowman. Well, look, why don't you finish it? Like this, maybe. The evening sun goes down upon the plain. Homeward the plowman plods his weary way. Yeah. His furniture brightly gleams in every grain. He jaunts and waxes everything each day. Isn't that cute, McGee? My gosh, Junior, can't you realize that true poetry is... Hey, I like this one, too. The one that starts out, Listen, my children, and you shall hear How housewives far and housewives near... Hey, hey, that ain't the way I wrote that. You're twisting it. Learned of the beautiful, wondrous facts and the joys of using Johnson's wax. Plagiarism. Johnson's on picture frames and doors, on tables and chairs and sills and floors, on luggage and banisters, boxes and knobs. And a thousand other useful jobs. Now, just a darn minute, Waxy. <laughs> you can't twist Johnson's me. wax is a wonderful thing to make a housewife laugh and sing. Yeah. Makes drudgery just a hollow sham. But if McGee's getting sore, I'd better scram. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, isn't he clever, dearie? Clever, my clavicle. <laughs> He's got a lot of moxie barging in here and bur bur burlesquing my poetry. <laughs> and I suppose one cannot write real poetry until one has suffered, can one? <laughs> That's what they say. Yep. <laughs> so uh, you stay in here and suffer, dearie. I've got to go out and see how Beulah's coming along with dinner. Yep. And don't choose up all my good stationery. Okay. Ah, uh, there goes a good kid. If I ever get to be a successful poet and make a lot of dough, it'll never go to her head. No, sir. And I hate to think what it'll do to me. <laughs> I'd be the most impossible. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, Teeny. Please state your business briefly now. I'm a very busy what man. What you doing, mister? What you doing? Who are you? Oh, I'm engaged in the production of poetry, my child. Oh? And even while I'm standing here batting the fat with you, the poetic masterpiece of the world may be going unwritten. What was it you wanted? Well, I wanted you to help me get my piggy bank open, mister. Huh. Willie Toops is waiting for me. We're going to buy some rabbits. Oh. <laughs> you got to unscrew this little screw on the bottom of it. And I can't do it. I guess women just don't understand machinery, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not, sis. No? Well, here, let me have it. <laughs> Why, my gosh, I can unscrew this with my fingernails. Gee, you're strong, mister. <laughs> I bet you're the strongest man in the world, I bet you. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> One of the strongest, maybe, but... <laughs> <laughs> ah, there. Ooh, uh, whoop. Uh, oh. <laughs> all over the floor. Oh, well, here, Lord. I'll help you pick them up, sir. They sure rolled all over, didn't they, mm -hmm. mister? There's one under that chair over there. Okay, I'll get it. There you are, sis. Well, I guess that's all of them. Oh, no, mister. This is only 63 cents. Huh? Gee, I'd almost swear I had a dollar and a half. <laughs> oh, my gosh, really? Well, let's take another look, sis. I... You see any more, mister? Nary a shilling, sis. Unless they show up in the house cleaning. Looks like you're stuck. Oh. <laughs> huh? And I thought I was going to have a dollar and a oh, half. no. And I only got 63 cents. No, 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 no. no. Well, Thanks, anyway, uh, mister. I'm sorry I bothered now, you. Now, hey, 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 hey. Cheer up, sis. We'll probably find the other 80 or 90 cents when we vacuum in here. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. Here, here, here. Take this dollar. Take that. I'll keep whatever I find. Huh? What do you say? Oh, mister, you're the kindest man in the whole world. Mm -hmm. You're so nice to little children. Now Willie Toops and I can go buy a rabbit. 
Thank you ever so much, mister. That's yeah, okay. Now, you're sure I won't be making any profit when I find the rest of these coins? Mm, I'm sure you won't, mister. And thanks ever so much. Ah, oh, forget it, sis. Glad to be of service. Well, come again. Thanks, mister. Hey, Willie, I made another buck. Now let's go and have Mr. Anderson open it. <laughs> Sing, walk a little, talk a little. Get that moonlight, perfect June night. Just a night for love, and here's how you find it. Walk a little, talk a little, then you stop to steal a little kiss or two. Walk a little, talk a little, then you stop to say a little I love you. And you stroll along, hum a little song, and your heart will be in two. by a prize come yet? The one I won when I won the limerick contest? I haven't seen it, McGee. What do you suppose it'll be, anyway? Oh, well, suppose it is only a check for a couple of thousand. <laughs> Wouldn't that be grand? That'll be two grand. <laughs> <laughs> two thousand smackers. Yeah. I think I'll use it to build a little vine-covered tower on top of the house where I can sit and write poetry. <laughs> ah, imagine me sitting there with a turtle dove on each shoulder and a magneto in my hair. Magnolia, dearie. Yeah, a magnolia. Well, anyway, I, are you sure that prize didn't come yet? Pretty sure, but I'll check with Beulah. Beulah? Oh, Beulah? Somebody ball for Beulah? <laughs> hey, Beulah, did a package or a special delivery letter come from me today? No, sir. From which deal of operations was you anticipating to communicate? <laughs> He won a prize in a poetry contest, Beulah, and we're all agog to know what it is. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, but before you get all agog, maybe you better be sure it ain't all a gag. <laughs> well, this is no joke, Beulah. I won the contest legitimate. Let me know if I get a letter or something, will you? Yeah, sir. I know how it feels to get a prize for something. Once when I was just a little child, no more than a cinch high to a fat pony, I won me a beautiful dog bucket. <laughs> Oh, but everything happened at once in our family, seemed like. What do you mean, everything happened at once, Beulah? Two days after I gets me the doll buggy, we gets us a new baby brother, and my dolly gets dispossessed. <laughs> well, you were probably just as proud to wheel the real baby around as you would be to wheel the doll, Beulah. Oh, yes, sir, but with a real little baby, you can't fling it upon the porch when you want to go play run, she run with the other kids. <laughs> See, you stuck with me. Well, that's the penalty you pay for being a girl, Beulah. Little brother has the fun and sister does the work. Yeah. Then 20 years later, sister's buggy is broke and little brother's going around with dolls. It don't seem right. <laughs> well, let me know the minute my prize gets here, Beulah. I'm getting as itchy as a shortstop's flannel. <laughs> oh, get as itchy as a shortstop's flannel. 
living by the side of a man being a friend to a house. Huh? Well, <laughs> hey, you know what I'm going to compose? I'm going to compose a tone poem. Why, don't you have to know music for that? I thought you were tone deaf. What do you mean, tone deaf? I got perfect pitch. Have you really? Why, certainly. Give me a sharp hay fork and I can fill a wagon and nothing flat. <laughs> Boy, everybody used to say that I... Come in. Hello, Molly. Oh, hello there, Dr. Gamble. And how are you today, dreamboat? <laughs> Splendid, Doctor. Splendid. And you, pray tell, are feeling well? And I, pray tell, are feeling well. Sweet Genevieve, what goes on here? Well, it's very simple, Doctor. He's taking up poetry. Oh, no. Yes, Doctor, it is true. It is indeed true. I have at last come to my real vocation. It has become my mission in life to interpret beauty to those oh, who can... Oh, stop it, will you? Hmm? Don't drool that Greenwich Village nonsense at me, you little faker. Poetry of my peritoneum. Ooh. You couldn't rhyme moon and June if you collaborated 40 years with Ira Gershwin. <laughs> you haven't got a sonnet in your bonnet that'll bring 12 cents at a literary rummage sale. Hey, now listen. He won a prize in a poetry contest, Doctor. First prize, didn't you, dearie? Well, Natch. Now, if you two please be quiet, I have work to do. You will please excuse me, Doctor. I am about to woo the moose. You're about to what? Woo the moose. M-U-S-E, moose. Well, you got a great head for it. <laughs> and what's more... Come in. Package for Mr. McGee. Sign here, please. Thank you. Yeah. Heavenly days, McGee. It's from the International Food Corporation. Hmm? Must be your prize for the limerick contest. Oh, oh, this I shall have to see. <laughs> Open it up, chubby. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. My nerves. It ain't awful heavy, but... This is an odd way to deliver a couple of thousand bucks when I... Well, I'll be a... Well, for goodness sakes, what is it? Hmm. Interesting little prize, isn't it? Oh. Twelve packages of Heckler's Brecky Wecky Bran Flakes. <laughs> well, of all the double-crossing cheap jack chiselers I ever heard, here I beat my brains out for their dirty little limerick contest, and what do I get? Breakfast food. Poets don't need food. They live on the fragrance of wildflower. <laughs> well, as I always say, McGee, it only takes a pencil to write a little poem, but it takes a heap of groceries to make a house a hoem. <laughs> say, uh, that's not bad, Molly. You know, I've always wanted to write poetry myself, Doctor. Huh? In fact, I think I will. No. I think I'll make it my mission in life to bring joy and happiness into the dream. No, 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 not that. Please, no, no. no. April, month of showers, puts a little extra strain on your housekeeping duties, doesn't it? Wet feet and rubbers are apt to track up your floors, and rain may come in an open window. But that's when you really appreciate the faithful service of Johnson's Wax, standing guard over the beauty and finish of your floors and your windowsills. The wax forms a protective shield, not only against moisture, but against dirt and wear, too. It makes your housework easier all year, adds to the beauty of your entire home. Floors, furniture, and woodwork that are regularly Johnson waxed take on greater beauty with each application. And there are more than a hundred extra uses for Johnson's wax throughout your home. For leather goods like shoes and luggage. For accessories and picture frames and lampshades. For metal and enamel surfaces like your refrigerator. Johnson's wax is really more than a household help. It's a method of protective housekeeping. Have you given up poetry for good? I'll say I have. I'm through. Why? Well, Dr. Gamble wanted you to write a little thing for him. Oh, gee, really? What does he want? A check for twenty-two fifty. Hmm. He says you can call it Ode to a Doctor. Huh? <laughs> good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>
This is the National Broadcasting Company.